Welcome back to the Daily Grind, everyone. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna do some feeding. So I've got my fertilizer right here, and I'm gonna do a little bit of uh, liquid nutrients to be able to give them a quick boost. I've got some newer sprouts in the ground. I'm gonna add some soil acidifier, and that's gonna lower the pH of the soil and allow those plants to uptake the nutrients a little better. When the soil pH is off, sometimes they just don't get all the nutrients that they need. It's harder for them to pull out a lot of the macronutrients and micronutrients as well. So. We'll go ahead and do that, and I'll bring you guys along. All right, first and foremost, I'm gonna go through each of my beds and test the pH here. So this meter does moisture and pH and also tells the light, how much light it's getting. So for instance, for the light, if I move it to the light, it's all the way up. If I block it, you can see that that lowers the light when I block the light from hitting the sun. So in the shade, in the sun. but. What I'm going to do is the pH. Also, it'll test moisture, so I can see I'm right now, I get it in a couple inches deep there. I'm at four, so that's about right. That's where I want to be. Let's go to the pH. So all the way to the left would be a high pH. All the way to the right would be a low pH. Right here, it's eight to three and a half. And for most of these, I mean, it went way that way. So I have a very alkaline soil. This comes from our very hard water. So constant watering with the water is lowering the pH. It's just not good for the plants. No matter where I put this, it's just all the way over. And the same thing goes with the potted plants. That's all the way over. That's all the way over. And we're just gonna test all the way around to see if there's anywhere that is not. And it's all a very, very high pH. So we need to fix that because that's not allowing these to get nutrients. Now right here might be different because I added some of the soil acidifier here. Now I added some other stuff too that could have raised it. Let's see. Let's put it right in between these plants and see what happens here. No, that's still really, really alkaline. So I need to change that. Plants are doing good um, with or without the high pH soil, but I, I want to make them as healthy as possible. So we need to raise that. And most of these plants like anywhere from six and a half to seven. Some of them like you a little bit less in the sixes and five and a half. But if you aim for six and a half, the majority of your plants in the garden will like that uh, with the exception of a couple. And so here we go. This is what I'm gonna use. This is soil acidifier. It's gonna be a pain because I've got to move all of the mulch around, but everywhere I check, it's high pH. Even the place that I added some a while back, so I just need to add a little more. So let's look and see how much it recommends. For new plants, use one and a quarter cups. For established plants, use two and a half cups. Spread evenly around the plant and drip line. Repeat in 60 day intervals. 12 pounds per 100 square feet. So I just wasn't adding enough. That's, that's the issue right there. It's not gonna get far to the left or right or whatever, but I'm just gonna make trenches here. We're gonna open this up, get it right under this drip line here. All right, so pretty much I've got one everywhere. I've got a drip line except for this one, and it's right in between my garlic, and I don't want to disturb that garlic. All right, so there's dust that comes out. Do not breathe that dust in. It's bitter. It tastes terrible. And I'm just going to sprinkle a handful per half. But you almost want to hold your breath. <gasps> That's freaking me out. What is she doing? She's going to hold her breath until she gets a new one. Duh. A lot of dust that comes off of this. Scratch that in. Make sure it gets underneath the soil a little bit. Get some soil contact. So the moisture starts breaking down some of that sulfur and acidifying it. Mulch back on top. You might be asking why not use organic granule fertilizer like I do a lot. Well, that takes a little while for it to to start working and benefiting the plants. And so, and I already planted it and that lasts for months in the soil, breaking down over time with that soil biome, adding nutrients back into the soil. And so you really don't have to use that very often. Some people use it 
every month or so, but I just use it once underneath the plants when I plant them. And then I come in with liquid fertilizer after because that's a natural boost right away. Now I will add some granule fertilizer sometimes depending on the plant. So for instance, with tomatoes, those grow for like four months. So usually about two months in, I'll give another dose of that fertilizer, the granules, but right now we're gonna use liquid. But let's go through all of my potted plants here as well and lower that pH. I added it to this one just right on top because I don't want to disturb the roots of any of these. And I'm just scratching it in right at the surface. And over time that should work to break down. I'll try to get some right along this drip line. Right along this drip line. I don't want to go too much in that bed. It's a newer bed. So it hasn't, it probably has a little higher pH. It didn't show that, but hasn't been watered as long as some of the others. Now, I'm not sure if apples like acidic soil or not, but I'm just going to add a little bit in each of my apple trees here because I know it's still way too high. Everything I have in here is way too high. Now this bed for sure needs it. We're gonna go along each drip line. Let me see. So this does not say I need to scratch it in. You know, I might not because it's a pain. I'm just gonna kind of spread it right on top along the drip lines. You know, and that makes sense that I don't have to water it in because I mean, it's just sulfur. This is gonna get hit by water. And it's gonna start breaking down with the water even on the top and go right into the bed. So I don't see that as an issue. In fact, with that in mind, let's go ahead and do that along here. We'll just do it right on top of the compost here. Okay, now to fertilize, guys. So, what I'm doing here, I've got a couple different fertilizers. I'm gonna use different ones based on what plants I'm gonna fertilize. And the first thing I'm gonna do is fertilize all my root veggies, and those require very little nitrogen. Now this here is a 6126. I think six is a little high on nitrogen. This is a 511. That is high on nitrogen, but this is a zero. This is a zero 1010. So how these numbers work is, if you don't know this, the zero on this one is nitrogen. So the first number is nitrogen. So that's nitrogen. This is phosphorus. That's potassium. This is mostly phosphorus and potassium. This one. This one is mostly nitrogen with a little bit of phosphorus and potassium. This is 6126, so it's almost all phosphorus. A little bit of potassium and nitrogen. So what I'm going to do is, for my root veggies that don't like high nitrogen, you always shake it up first. I'm going to add a fair amount of this stuff with a dot, just a touch, of this fish fertilizer, which is a 511. It is adding some nitrogen, but it's not very much. Just a tiny bit. So this becomes almost, at that point, I'm adding less than what I'm supposed to on this. So this becomes like a three, probably a three nitrogen and a 10 or 11 or 12 or something. I added quite a bit of this 12, 12, you know? Um, so that's gonna help. That's pretty much what I'm doing here. So what I do is, with this stuff, I always fill up a little bit and then I shake it, fill the rest of the way up. Now this stuff stinks. It is made from emuls emulsified fish. Caught my limit! I see you only snag one, huh? Go to work, baby. Pew! What's that smell? So it's smelly, but it works well. 
All right, so this is going to all my root veggies. First, the carrots here. I've got a bunch of carrots. I'm just gonna do that one light since it's in a pot. I wanna overfeed them. And then this is all root veggies as well. This is carrots and radish. We'll get up all the way to there. Now this half of the bed is nitrogen loving plants, so we're not gonna add it to those. On this side of the bed here, I've got carrots growing. So I am gonna add this to this side of the bed. Although I do have some onions, which like nitrogen, but I don't wanna mess up those carrots. All right, so there's all that. And then on that side, I'm gonna end up adding in higher nitrogen. Let's do one more bucket of this. Same thing, guys. All right, and then this bed is all root veggies. I have them way too close together, I'm gonna to be honest. But they're in desperate need of fertilizer because I have not added anything here. Now, I did add a lot of compost when I first started this bed, so, you know, they've got all the nutrients they need from that compost. A lot of that is nitrogen, so I'm trying to just boost the other nutrients. Let's focus on what we're going to do with the nitrogen-loving plants. So what I'm going to do, I'm still using this fish fertilizer. We're not going to use this mora bloom anymore. We don't need that. But I am going to use a hefty dose of this fish fertilizer. Quite a bit coming out. And then... And then I'm going to use this. So this is that 6126. I'm going to get everything else that I need. And you just basically fill it up to the line where it says, boom. It says one ounce per gallon. This is a one and a half gallon, so I'm a little under what it recommends. But I've got that fish fertilizer in there, so. The other thing that these nutrients do is it adds a lot of micronutrients, not just the 511 like the fish fertilizer says. There's other stuff in this. There's natural bacteria and everything growing in here. It's going to be beneficial to the garden on many different ways other than just adding fertilizer. There's so much good stuff in that fish fertilizer. And even that has to grow. I think it also has fish fertilizer in it. It's part of where it gets all of its nitrogen, I believe. So this bed is garlic and lettuce and arugula and pretty much all nitrogen loving plants. Now with this fertilizer, because it is a natural fertilizer and I'm kind of having it water on the leaves and stuff, you don't want to, for a couple days, you don't want to eat the the greens off of this, you want to hose it off and make sure because then you're eating emulsified fish, which can't be too appetizing. So again, I've got carrots on the other side and I don't want those carrots to get the high nitrogen fertilizer. We'll go all through there. Get way over there. There we go. All right, let's fill that up and do the same thing. Same thing, so it's got this little measuring thing here. So you just squeeze it and it fills that up like so. And I'm about at the one mark. And we'll just put that right in. All right, so this is leeks. They like high nitrogen. I got more leeks over here which also like high nitrogen. I am gonna water all of my potted plants over here. These are trees. Now, these are citrus, which actually I gotta do the acidifier with these, I forgot to. So I'm gonna come back and do that. But all the trees will do the higher nitrogen. This blueberry. Those two are blueberry, those two are Meyer lemons, and then avocado. All right, 
I got those leeks there. I'll give a little bit to my rosemary bush here. A little bit to the apple seedling, another apple seedling, and then the rest to my onions, which onions love nitrogen. So I think I got most everything. Oh, I did forget one, but I've got a lot of residual stuff in there. So add just a little bit of water and add some of that nutrients into this, uh, which is lettuce. All right, guys, there we go. I've fertilized everything. We'll see how this does. I'll bring you guys back in a couple days and we'll see if we see any benefit to some of these seedlings, any faster growth if they get greener because right now they're looking a little yellow and I don't like that. So I have a feeling adding these nutrients and lowering the pH of the soil slightly is going to really benefit this spinach right here in this row and also this arugula, the newer seedlings of the lettuces. And then this should turn bright green pretty soon because I did that here and they're looking great. So we'll see how this turns out. I'll bring you guys back in a couple days and we'll see the results. Two weeks later. So we had a major frost that came through and I waited another week after the frost just to let these bounce back. But boy, have they bounced back. And you can see just how deep green the spinach is and the arugula is looking great. Everything has really grown very well. These were looking pretty sad actually, both my lettuces here, but they've bounced back and they're starting to grow again. I lost quite a few of these leaves like this. They're just, they died back and see all shriveled, but a lot of them are popping up from the center. And so definitely you can see the difference with the fertilizer. There's a couple of these like this that got damaged as well but those were damaged right after the frost. Some of these are yellow, again, because of the frost. It knocked some of them back, but really has come forth in the last couple days once all that fertilizer is kind of doing its thing and they've eaten the fertilizer. They're coming, coming right back. So this bed is doing really well. This was a little bit earlier planted, so they were more established during that frost that we had, which I fertilized right before the frost. I also had planted these. And they're still looking pretty small, but a lot of them all actually look like they were gonna die. Um, I did lose some lettuce here, but the spinach did okay and the arugula, but they still haven't really fully recovered from that frost because they were just planted like a week before the frost. And same here, a lot of these had died. I lost a couple on the sides here and that side, um, but the center ones kind of lived, but they're just not really doing much at the moment. I'm not springing forth and the onions are doing really good i did lose a couple like this one is not looking very good so i don't know if that's going to end up coming back or not a couple of the small little onions mm, i'm not sure about they might not make it but definitely the ones that were well established did fine in the frost and they are really growing now after getting that fertilizer especially this bunching onion i mean look at this now there's some yellow that's okay. I mean, you just got to kind of pick back some of the dying. I mean, that happens. Um, but the fresh green growth, look at how thick this is. That's really good looking. Um, so that's going to, it's going to be some really good onions, some good green onions. And then the root veggies always do fine in the frost. And you can tell that they're really growing and quite a bit different from just a couple weeks ago. That fertilizer really helped them quite a bit. In fact, I'm going to be harvesting these radishes pretty soon. You can see there's some good sized radishes under there, but I think I'm going to give it another two or three days and let them really kind of bulb out and then I'll harvest them. And the leek really grew quite a bit. Um, it's looking really good. So I'll start being able to harvest some leek probably another month and a half, it looks like. Maybe two months. I mean, leeks do take a long time, but well, thanks for coming along everyone on this journey of fertilizing. If you like this kind of content, please subscribe and hit that bell notification for future video updates. Also, if you could hit the like button, it would really help me and the channel out. And I will see you on the next video. Now you guys try to escape the daily grind.